Hey YouTube, Sandy Frank here. This week's episode of Hobby Talk, I wanted to talk about MetaZoo. So, MetaZoo, a couple years ago, they started their uh, game. They had the uh, Kickstarter, Cryptid Nation. I was not in on the Kickstarter. I did want to buy some of the first edition boxes when they came out, but um, they were just... Everything was just too hot with MetaZoo. It was too expensive. I didn't want to spend crazy amounts of money for it. But then, like, the second edition came out of this. The Cryptid Nation set. Great set. I actually really liked MetaZoo. Uh, the, the Nightfall set is fantastic. The Wilderness set, also fantastic. Um, I loved... Some of the things they were doing back then were just top level. TCG stuff like cutting edge, like secret rares, serialized cards, um, just really cool. And the secret rares were amazing. Like you had red ink, you had blue ink. Um, they only made a hundred of each one, and you know, um, it's very tough to pull one. Uh, Nightfall had, of course, old scratch, another secret rare that they only made a hundred of. Um, how awesome would it be to pull an old scratch? Uh, the Wilderness set, another fantastic set. I think they they peaked with with the uh, Wilderness, and um, some of their problems began with Wilderness as well. Uh, MetaZoo was on a rocket ship going up, and then Wilderness came out. Fantastic set. You had the Green Man, which was a serialized out of 100 secret rare. And you had the golden ticket, the silver tickets, the bronze tickets. You had all these really cool things to pull, to look for, to chase. The set was fantastic. But one of the uh, big missteps for Mezu was overprinting. So they, they made 100,000 wilderness booster boxes. That is a lot of booster boxes. Um, the UFO set came out. Um, and people were kind of fatigued by how many uh, boxes were being printed for Wilderness. And UFO came out. I was excited for UFO. I still love UFO set. That was my, one of my most anticipated sets. But um, it was massively overprinted as well. And immediately started dropping like a rock. And um, I haven't checked prices here lately. But last I knew you could get all the uh wilderness and ufo boxes you wanted for probably around 50 60 bucks probably less than that now probably between 40 and 60 cryptonations volume 2 i was able to pick up a bunch of boxes you know a few months ago for in the 20s per box that is that is catastrophic low prices for a tcg um, I still think the first edition boxes are still fairly expensive and Nightfall um, it is the last I checked was around $80 a box so less than um, like a box of Pokemon but um, definitely high for Menace's stuff so these missteps with Wilderness and UFO, um, they could have survived, I think, still. But they really made some really strange decisions with the Seance set. Some very... Um, I mean, they wanted to be a, make it a dark set. But it was very dark. And so dark that I don't even open it on the channel. And I got pretty thick skin, but I don't really want to put that on the channel. Um, it's... Not for me, but I did buy a box or two just for my collection. Just I'm not planning on opening them. Um, the next set after that was Native, and um, seemed like more missteps were happening, where only a few boxes were available when it, on, when it first released. Did they do this on purpose to prop up their prices? I don't know. Um, they were very aggressive in the fact that there was four different booster box designs. It seems like they they kind of um, had great ideas, but the 
the ideas were so grand and grandiose that it kind of got them lost a little bit. So I love the native set, but you could definitely tell they were really starting to stretch for cryptid creatures to feature in the sets. Cryptid Nation is loaded with all kinds of great cryptid creatures. Nightfall, I mean, all these sets are really good um, as far as a lot of different um, creatures that you, that you, but then Seance is kind of like, all right, there's not a lot of, uh, of uh, ones I've heard of. Native, there's definitely not many I've heard of in that set. And that's the whole reason I liked Metazoo was because I love cryptid creatures. I think it's really cool to have a game based on it. Well, um, they are, um, I think, the kind of disasters with Native, um, not having enough boxes at the beginning, and then people losing interest very quickly, and moving on to things like Lorcana, things like you know, other TCGs, One Piece, those those games came on the scene. Disastrous relationships with, with uh, gaming stores. Um, you know, you can argue with me all you want on this, but if you make it to where the gaming store does not want to carry your product, you are going to go down in flames as a TCG. And, you know, just making it a few YouTubers <laughs> that... Uh, uh, make make your product available through them. It's not gonna it's not gonna make it. It's gonna annoy people. You can't go to a gaming store. You can't buy the stuff online through gaming stores unless they were like these certain individuals, and that that put a bad taste in my mouth. And it got to be very annoying. Um, plus, the the product seemed to be. I mean, the artwork and quality of the cards has gotten better and better, but the subject matter has not gotten better. It hasn't kept up. And um, there became, to me, pretty apparent that Mezu was in trouble because they started doing products that were 100% money grabs. Um, you know, this uh, streamer kit... This still hasn't emerged. That's it's been probably a year since I ordered that. Um, it seems like it's been a year. Maybe it hasn't been a year, but having stuff on pre-order to get the money from people and then not delivering screams, screams money grab. Um, a lot of their stuff, people were they would put up for order, and that wouldn't be ready for months and months and months and months. They. The um, it was another big misstep and annoyed a lot of their fans, the people that that did the uh, Kickstarter, the poker card, um, Kickstarter playing cards. You know, it, it was an area they really didn't need to go in, and then they did a Kickstarter, and just took forever to complete the Kickstarter, uh, to get the the uh, things out to people, and zero communication. Not zero, I would say minuscule communication with people to say, hey, keeping people up to date, this is what's happening. It's just horrible communication, especially when a product is delayed that long. It That chased off a lot of MetaZoo support, I think. Now, I think MetaZoo is not something for me anymore. I love the first sets. I think there were six sets. Yes. The main six sets I'm very interested in. I love, you know I love the cards. I do a show card to card with Sandy Frank um, every, uh, every other Friday. And I love the subject matter on those cards. Very interesting. But, you know, it seems like you're going very different directions now. I mean, they just put out a, a Hello Kitty theme set. You know, I don't get it. I, I don't get how that has anything to do with what made Metazoo cool. Yeah, if you like Hello Kitty, bring it on. But, you know, Hello Kitty is not a cryptid. It is not, um, it's not an interest to me. So, also, stuff like this, getting into, like, Topps Chrome, it seemed like... 
Top Scrum, these were fun, but it took so much thunder away from the actual cards, the game cards. Um, people started, the people that loved Mezu were all of a sudden chasing this stuff, and to be honest, the booster, the, the hobby boxes of this stuff were terrible. One numbered card per hobby box. People were paying big money and just getting burned. And these blasters were by far the better deal because a lot of them have a numbered card. And plus you get the X-Fractors. It's just weird offshoots that I think are dooming MetaZoo. You know, a hardcore MetaZoo fan is going to be like, well, just get out, you know. And if you don't like it, just leave. Well, I like Mezu. <laughs> That's the problem. I like it. I like it a lot. But I was like, the next set that was supposed to come out was supposed to be a set called War. That was supposed to have every single cryptid in it. Very exciting. It would be a huge set. But it's another thing that's like, they bit off more than they can chew, and now I don't think that set's ever going to happen because now they're changing art direction. Poncho's not even going to be doing art for them anymore. Like, what direction are they going in? Like, cutesy little Hello Kitty stuff? It's just such a confusing company of, of where they're what they're wanting to do. And, um, yeah. I've, I'll, if War ever comes out, I'll buy some of the War set. If it comes out in booster box form. Um, I did buy some of the Legacy. This was clearly another money grab by Metazoo. Um, Legacy is supposed to be like a... I don't know. Like a greatest hits uh, version of some of these uh, sets. I don't know. I bought it because I thought it sounded okay. But it came along with... And eh, I bet you they end up never making more. So... That might be the last gasp of these uh, cryptid type sets, which is going to suck because they said they just said this last couple of weeks that they're going a different direction with the art. Um, got rid of some of the most loved uh, artists like Poncho. I don't know if they got rid of them or they just left. Um, yeah, so a company that's maybe they'll find their way, maybe. But they've gone directions that I'm not going. So I am definitely um, going to be keeping an ear to them and see what happens with them. And I love the... I'm not going to say I love Seance, but I love the first six sets. I think they're really neat. I wish they would have kept, go kept the cryptid themes going. Um, I was really excited for a Japanese set. I was really excited for a European set. Um, you know, all this stuff sounds really awesome. You know, maybe a South American set expanded out to other nations besides like North America, but I don't, I just don't see them going back to this type of thing when they're moving more towards, uh, kitty type stuff like Hello Kitty, um, cartoony, um, you know, type stuff that's not really for me. Now... <clears throat> if you like the Hello Kitty type stuff, awesome. Um, go for it. It's I don't have any problem with what people collect. It's just not for me. And I'm more into, like I said, the cryptid type creatures. And now my interests, like I always like um, Pokemon. And um, I think my secondary TCG interest definitely shifted towards sorcery. It's amazing <laughs> this is the, the art in sorcery is amazing i love art in cards so um i'm very much looking forward to getting into that and it seems like a game i'd like to play where menace was not a game i would ever play but what's important is what do you guys think is menace going to make it with this new direction that they're going um are you guys if you guys loved the early MetaZoo sets, are you still, you know, interested in MetaZoo? Um, and, you know, they have the cartoons coming out now and the comic books. So it seems like they're trying to become going for a much younger audience. And could that come back and bite them if these kids start 
you know, getting into the original Mezu games or sets, like, and stumbling upon, like, Nightfall and Seance and some pretty uh, dark stuff. It's a really sticky web that Mezu is kind of spinning, but, you know, they made it. They made six really interesting sets. Um, I hope War comes around. I will buy War if it comes out. Um, if they ever get back to um, cryptid type things, I'd love to see a European set, a Japanese set. You know, I think it'd be really cool. But I just don't think they're going to get back to that. And, you know, the really hardcore Mezu fans, which I thought I probably was, but eh, maybe not. I don't play the game. I just love the cryptid type aspect of it. But if that is not something they're wanting to do, you know, good for them. I, I can like other stuff and it's okay. But, so I will say, I'm not going to say I'll never open Mezu stuff on the channel again. Because I love these original sets. And who knows. Five years from now. It will be fun to go back down these rooks. I have a ton of the boxes. Just. Um, you know. They're just sitting back there. For me to open for fun someday. But. As far as. Future sets. Nah. I'm definitely backing way off. And not interested in Hello Kitty Mezu. So. Again. What do you guys think? Is Mezu going to make it? Is. Like, I used to think five years, when a couple years ago, I'd think five years from now, Mezzi's for sure going to be around. I don't know if Mezzi's going to be around like a year from now because of these directions they're going. Yeah, I don't know. And plus these uh, cash grabs, putting stuff on pre-order for months and months and months and months ahead of time, annoying people, and, um, you know, taking forever to deliver on what they promise people. Yeah, people just get fed up and move on to something else. I mean, we got, there's Lurkana now. There's Sorcery. There's One Piece. Um, games that have way more of a uh, upswing, more, more momentum. And Mezu is really screeching down. But I will give props to them. They did some things that have never been done in TCGs. The Secret Rares, the Serialized Cards... They, I mean, other companies now copy that, <laughs> you know? So the art, the original few sets of art was amazing. Um, they did a good job getting it going. It just didn't keep going that direction. Maybe they had to change. They could see it was going to crash and burn if they kept going the way they were going. And they're trying something to keep the company going. Anyway, this is my thoughts on Mezu. And you probably won't see a lot more Mezu related hobby talks on the channel but thank you Mezu for six pretty cool sets even seance even though i'm not going to open any it definitely um is an interesting set to say the least all right thank you for watching stay tuned for more videos later